Pitching face-to-face, -face, business meetings. On the phone, you can hear the confidence in somebody. You can hear how they're coming across. It's the way I'm speaking to the camera right now. I'm not speaking to the camera like, you know, when you're pitching people. They can hear it on the phone, but in person, they can feel it. Nice, firm handshake. Sitting like this, trying to explain your ideas. Being animated with your hands when you're pitching your ideas. Being excited in your, in your voice when you're pitching your ideas. If I were to sit here and say like, yeah, you know, when you're pitching people in person, what you need to do is be uh, excitable and, you know, make sure that you're coming across right. It's not the same. It's not the same. You have to have the energy. You have to have the fire. You certainly don't have to seem like it's the most important thing in the world, like you care more than anything else in the world, but you need to seem like you care more than them. That's the key. If this business has a problem and I can fix it, I care about this man's business visibly more than he does during that meeting. That's the only thing that's going to get a man excited. There are very few types of sales where a salesman could sit back and be like, well, you know, here's the price. Here's the best I could do. Do you want it or not? And I've been sold those things in some ways. I went into the Rolls Royce showroom in London and the guy's name, I believe, was Warren or Stephen. It may have been Stephen, actually, the guy who sold me the Rolls Royce. Older gentleman, very well dressed, very smart. It was half a million pounds on this price tag of this car. It was the only one for sale. He knew it was the only one for sale. He knew if I didn't want to buy that one, I'd have to wait six months after ordering one. And he said, well, you know, I've been doing this a long time, guys. 465, best I could do, yes or no? And I was like, cool, yes. Because he's in a very unique position as a salesman. He hasn't come to me and said, hey, Tristan, do you want to get around in luxury? Here's a brand new product called a Rolls Royce Wraith. That didn't happen. I saw the car, I fell in love with it. I walked into his showroom as hundreds of time wasters do every day. He's busy, he doesn't care, there's one for sale, and he made the clothes. But that is a very exceptionally difficult type of sales to get into. How many Toyotas has Steven sold in his lifetime? How many Lancias? How many Austins? I'm talking about old car brands that were around in his time. He's a much older man. How many Mini Coopers did this guy sell to get to the elite pinnacle of sales when he is in the London Rolls Royce showroom selling their premium vehicles? Probably a lifetime of work, so he deserves to be there but he's done plenty of hard closes on Land Rovers and Jeeps, believe me.